Okay, good uh, Wednesday morning. So, I gotta start greasing hitches and everything else on these scrapers. There's a lot of greasing points. These are your H links here for your cushion hitch. There's your cylinder. This is the cushion hitch leveling valve. This controls the height of the hitch when it's running. There's a, a lever hooked to this plate right here and a spool up in the valve. And as that hitch goes up and down, it maintains the height. Anyway, you got H-Link there, and then you got your main king pins there. You got a grease one on top, all these steering linkages. We've converted the rear steering cylinders over to be able to be greasable. Originally, they weren't on these. When they came out with the D models, they started making it so you can grease those back ones. And you got your two main king pins down there. So we've welded plates on them here. This is the only one. I don't have hoses for that. All I need to do is undo those two fittings on the bottom down there. And screw hoses in to come to here and then you don't have to crawl in there to grease those i i don't remember why we didn't hook them up i'm assuming it's because i didn't have enough hoses to do that i need to get another couple of hoses anyway uh you see a lot of scrapers that are just covered in grease because they over grease them or they use poor grease so the the maintenance manual for these say to grease the hitch, uh, I think once every 50 hours, so we grease once a week. We're using a Hydrotex grease. Uh, Kat says use a 3-5% to 5 molybdenum grease, and that's what this is. Um, a molly grease is going to be gray or black. And uh, anyway, we found with this Hydrotex grease that we can grease once a week and it's not running out all over and it stays put I had a guy come by and sell me a bunch of grease I don't remember what it was green colored grease and uh, you know I said hey I gotta have three to five percent oh yeah it's got that in there no it doesn't because it was green it wasn't Molly he greased these hitches and within two or three days they were barking they were dry did a lot of damage with that grease so we got rid of it <clears throat> went back to this stuff and it's the only grease i found that actually stays put inside the hitch now for the bale we just use a cheap mobile grease and we put it in a five gallon pail and then we just take a survey lath and scoop it out and smear it all over the push plate and the bale every day and that's the only grease that we've found that will stick to that push plate and take all the dust and dirt and still stay put. Now, you got to do that every day because at the end of the day, it's gone and you're down to practically metal to metal again. Uh, this stuff will not stick too well, doesn't react too well with the dirt and stuff, and it falls off but boy that mobile stuff is sticky crap so anyway as long as you've got as you're running it you can see grease like on that one coming out and everything's good they'll go weak anyway you don't have all that mess up here a lot of scrapers you'll see are just absolutely covered in crap And you don't have to grease till it starts coming out all over. Just got to get some in there and it'll come out. Right now that one's over this way. As soon as it shifts the other way, it'll push all that stuff out.
probably going to take quite a bit of grease since it's been sitting for so long. So I put plenty in it. Anyway, I'd hate to be a lube guy and be doing this every day with a fleet of scrapers. There are some things we have to grease every day and those would be the tail rollers on the ejector. I'll show those to you when I get back in there and do those. Yeah, how tight that got. It's already pushing grease to it. So the H-links have a brass bearing in them and then the main hitch inside there has uh, steel, well they call it brat, I don't know what it's called, it's an impregnated steel, you can't weld on it, you can't, it's wicked stuff. See, it's coming out already. And it's been sitting six months. And when I told you that in the last video that it sat six months, it's just unbelievable that we only use them that much. But that's kind of the way it's gotten to be lately. It's just not, doesn't seem to be a lot of scraper work. Jake stays busy with the backhoe and we stay busy with 336 and <clears throat> It gets to be a messy operation. <sighs> so that grease fitting there spits it out up on the top because there's a washer on there, a big thick one that takes the thrust and then that one below it greases into the pin and the bushing bearing whatever you want to call it anyway grease 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 see this is why we get grease all over once a year you guys gotta steam clean these so I'll go to town and get her done okay these are your tail rollers these you have to grease every day there's no kind of seal in them or nothing. Now you grease the crap out of them. Sounds like I'm running out of battery here. Dang it. Time for a new battery. So we got grease coming out there and it pushed this one over and started squeezing it out so those rollers are full. Looks like we need a new grease fitting on that one. Check valve's messed up. And then the other one you gotta make sure to do regular is that rear drive shaft you joint keep that full because if that fails it'll go over and destroy the transmission case when the drive line breaks it needs a drive shaft loop put on it I don't know if the newer ones have that or not okay so now I got to get the brakes actually I don't even think yeah we don't have rear brakes on this one I don't think as you can see, the linings are completely gone on that one. So, yeah, it's unhooked. So, we got to go up and get the fan drive and the idler, which 
adjust the rear fan belt. Okay, let's add to the we don't back drag file here. Talk about something controversial. So this motor's been sitting overnight, changed the oil. So when you pull the dipstick out, you'll see guys do this. Pull it out, look at it. Okay, we're not into the safe starting range. I may need to add a little bit more. You can see where that is right there. But the first thing they'll do is they'll take a paper towel and wipe it off. Now, what's the point in doing that? You've just pulled it up out of there and you smeared oil all the in, over the inside of that tube. Now you're gonna stick it in and you're gonna expect to get an accurate reading. And you're gonna have oil all over the dipstick. So you pull it out again. Oh, and look at what we got there. Oh, now it says it's up in the safe starting range. Hmm, I wonder why that is. So, wiping that stick off is not going to give you an ac accurate reading. So, these old engines have a engine off side that you can check them, but we generally check them running. Uh, and you don't have to wipe them off when you pull them out when they're running either because you'll get the best reading by just pulling them out once don't wipe it off <laughs> it just that just always slayed me why why do you want to wipe the dipstick off and poke it back in because you put as on the way out you're putting all that oil all over that tube and you stuff it back in and it gets all over the stick and then you don't get a correct reading so don't back blade. There's only two bolts. <laughs> okay, so I got up in the scraper, pulled the AC filter out, washed it. Now, I took the blow gun to the floor and everything else, blew it out. On these twin engine scrapers, you got to blow out around that throttle pedal here. You got to keep that dirt away from that mechanism in there. So I blew all that out. So now I gotta get it started and then uh, gonna have to check the AC system. Make sure we're up to snuff on that. So in some Facebook posts, some guys were asking about engines that didn't run good and just wanted to reiterate a valve job, a good quality valve job does wonders. So generally these will just fire right up if it's middle of the summer, even if they've been sitting, they'll fire up. But I'll just heat the glow plugs for just a few seconds here, crank it up. See how they start up, no smoke, no missing. That's because of a good valve job. I do all my own. I use a new way, three angle seat cutter. I'll go show you that. But you make all your power inside that cylinder. And if you've got any leakage at the valves, you reduce that pressure. You reduce your power and your ability to start cold. And most outfits just don't know how to do a good valve job. They're not gonna spend the time at it. To do a quality good one make sure the seats are concentric but old Jeff does because Jeff wins okay so this is the tool I bought so this is the one this will do valve faces and uh, you put that handle in there and then you just put this in the vise and you can do your valve faces. Uh, I generally don't do valve faces on 343s. I just throw the valves away and start over. Let me show you the other one. Okay, so this is the other one. And there's your pilots for your seats. I got a bunch of new bits for it. And then this is the handle. Just goes over the 
uh, guide and that's how you operate it but these are the cutters so this one right here is a 30 degree here's your 60 this is a 15 and then this is the one I use the most this is a 30 on one side 40 on the other so you can buy these carbide cutters with the three angle already on them but I don't like doing that because every seat width is different I don't want to have a zillion different ones so basically you're going to go in with a 60 and clean up the bottom and a 30 on the top clean that up and that'll show you what your 45 is and then you're going to go in with a 45 and clean that up and then you're going to take a jeweler's eyepiece and you're going to look at that and you're going to add a set of dial calipers and i believe the exhaust seats are like 75 and the intakes were 60 and it's critical to get those widths correct too narrow and they don't transfer the heat on the exhaust valve too wide they're not going to seat uh, but anyway since i've been doing all my own valve work i have noticed an amazing improvement in the startability of the scrapers engines they just absolutely run better anyway i don't know i paid three or four hundred dollars for this it's, it's well worth it if you want to take the time to do this looks like it might rain so the compressor showed up yesterday i haven't had a chance to open it up let's look at it so somebody asked me what the fast was for let me change the camera setting so you don't see those lights okay so i bought that at the uh louisville kentucky truck show and i bought it for pd because pd only has one lousy filter on it and it just always seems to be plugged up it hasn't given us a lick of problems lately but anyway so i got this from let's see they had a thing on here right here power brake sales sacramento okay let me put you down while i get this out of here Oh, balls, that's not the right one. Crap. It's not yellow. <laughs> we can fix that. So I like this. Warning, form in place gasket material should not be used to seal compressor to engine mount flange or base. Nah, 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 nah. They won't warranty it if you use silicone. Well... Boys, I'm here to tell you what, these are old. You don't use silicone, you're gonna have leaks. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. So, anyway, that's the unloader right there. And I think that's what the filthy whore's got a problem with, possibly. It don't wanna seem to pump air very good. And it's not making oil or anything. Alright, so this is a 277731. Ah, remanufactured air compressor. TF500. Okay, so it's gonna rain, so I can't really go out there and start tearing that apart. So this is interesting because normally uh my old one has a ball bearing in the front so what have they done updated these or something so you can see mine's got a ball bearing 
Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting. This is what I'm looking at right here is the teeth to make sure they're good. You got to have good teeth, Jeff. Anyway, looks the same. Looks the same to me. No, nope, it ain't. So it's assembled backwards. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now I gotta call them because that's gotta be turned around 180. That's, don't you just hate that shit when it happens? So what you'd have to do is open the crankcase up, take the rods undone, pull the jug assembly off, turn it around, put it back down, but you'd need a new gasket. Huh. What the heck? Why me? Why me? Huh. Balls. It really isn't going to work. Okay, so I don't know what happened here, but a 277731 has this oriented that way. What I needed was a 277730. So they're going to send me this gasket and a crankcase one. I'm going to take it apart, turn it around, and reassemble it into problem. And then she said... Some of them use uh, the bearing like that, the Babbitt style bearing. And some of them use a ball bearing like that. I'd never seen anything but the ball bearing. Anyway, their phone service, we got disconnected like three, four times. Finally, I said, I'll call you back in the morning. Um, so I asked them if they could send me an unloader kit for this one so I can redo it. And I, anyway, I just ended up saying I'll call you back in the morning. So I think what I'll do is I'll have them send me the gaskets and all the check valves and springs, the unloaders, and replace all that. And then this one will get put back together to run another day. Or maybe I should just send that one back to them and say, rebuild that one and send it back to me. Then I got a spare. And then I'll never need another air compressor. <laughs> oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. So my shaft looks a little better than theirs, but you got to remember these are some old compressors. They've been around a long time. Oh, I can't even turn that one. Oh, just barely. She's taunt. Taunt, taunt. This one turns easy. Oh well, so anyway, it's always something, isn't it? Always. So I've got number three and number two ready, ready to go. I had to put about a half a can of Freon in number two and she blows cold. So the AC's up and working. Man, it got cold out here quick. It's just one of those storms where you're not going to get much rain out of this. So as I was saying, I've got these two machines ready to go. Um, gosh, I wish that compressor would have been ready to put on. It wouldn't take me but a couple hours to get number one all together and then get the belly pan off and start doing some diagnostics to see where that water is coming from antifreeze so anyway i guess i'm done for the day you guys have an awesome evening i'll go in the house we'll make a video and uh, i'll see you tomorrow